Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Rise and Write with Grace and James. I'm Grace. I'm this James. is James. <laughs> He's James. And we are here. This is a place for creators, collaborators, and fun company for the journey. And today we are here with Jennifer Romano Kittredge out of the Tampa, Florida area. She is an author, a podcaster, um, and an embodiment guide. And we're going to find out all about that. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so you're happy to welcome. be here. <laughs> I'm so thrilled you're here. So Jen and I, a little background, Jen and I literally grew up next door to one another. Um, she moved away when we were, we used to like literally play teacher in the basement, play classroom. Yes. And now we're playing podcasts here. <laughs> yeah, it's <that is> amazing. <laughs> this is wild. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I'm uh, just How adjusting fun. the screen here. All right, yeah. so Jen, okay, I alluded a little bit. You have okay. had an interesting journey since I joined Facebook in 2014. Yes. You have gone from adoption specialist to uh, a journey in mental health. Yes. Um, you have evolved now into embodiment coach, and we want yes. to know an author, <laughs> an author of yes. seven books. Yes. So we have a lot to cover. So, what? We'll get back on that. What Where do we working, start? <laughs> yeah, what are you working on now? <laughs> so right now I am working on the second book in my new series, uh, the Broken Heart series. So I'm not working on that as fast as I was uh, the other book because I'm also um, doing a lot of group coaching with women under that embodiment guide um, title. Um, so that I've been writing curriculum for that. And I also just um, got an article published in a magazine. Yay. So yeah, well, that was exciting. Great. So tell us, I know you're most excited about your embodiment work right now. Yes. We'll get back to the book writing in a moment. Okay. Because that also involves curricular, curriculum. Yes. So tell us about the embodiment coaching that you're doing and what, okay. is, what is embodiment? Okay. So embodiment coaching comes from my background in mental health. Um, I just have always had a heart for women. When I was in adoption, I worked with birth mothers who I think are the most incredible, bravest women that I've ever met. Um, so walked with them through their adoption process and then walked with them through grief and loss for afterwards, um, after their adoption plan. So I just had this heart for women and I'm 47 now and I've been watching friends come into their 40s and a lot of them are going through a lot of change, divorce, careers, all of that. And there was just this need for support for women to really dive into like, who am I now? Who am I after all this time, after raising kids or having this career and all that? And a lot of women were lost in finances in, in so many different areas. And so with my mental health background, I was just like, okay, how can I help? What can I do? And I just started building this curriculum and having women over to my house and doing women's circles and really just being a support for all the changes and healing um, for them during this time. So embodiment is really stepping into who they truly are without the masks anymore. In their, in their being. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a question. How did the idea come to you? So you're working in mental health and then all of a yeah. sudden you see these changes happening in our peer group around us. Yes. Um, how did the idea of this specific um, area? Yeah, area. Come <laughs> okay. I think really through my own journey and me trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I like in the adoption field. I left uh, 2016, and I was kind of lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and that's where my writing started because I was like, well, I have all this time, and I and I love writing, um, and so just really like my struggles, like okay, what am I going to do now? My two of my kids are out of the house. Um, I've got one left and she's almost out of the house. And like, and it's kind of like, who am I redefining myself? Um, so I think it was just through my personal journey and going back and healing some things in my past and realizing, wow, I'm not alone in this. And there were so many women reaching out, like, what are you doing? How are you, you know, how are you doing this? And so it just kind of evolved. It was this organic thing that just kind of happened. <laughs> Interesting. And yeah. the name of it, the name of your, um, I love your- Oh, Wild Hearted Revolution. Wild Hearted yes. Revolution, yeah. Yeah, so that was like reclaiming our wild. I feel like women for so long have been like suppressed to like, you know, don't be too loud, don't be too bright, keep it down a little bit. And I'm like, 
no way. Like, let's step back into that and release it and, and really reclaim that for ourselves. And how is it going? It's going awesome. Yeah. So I started my first group. I have my founding members right now. So it's a six week group that started. Um, it'll be three weeks ago on Monday. And then I have another group starting next Tuesday with it, uh, more women really stepping in. So it's really going awesome. And I love it so much. I just hosted a big women's circle festival at my house. And I had um, there were seven, well, 18 of us here. And, we, and they all came and we worked on being the awakened woman. And it was awesome. It was beautiful. Do you find, I mean, you probably, there's probably many issues that come up. Is there, is there, do you find that there's something that's more prevalent than others? Like this is coming up a lot and may, maybe change and maybe a change. Of, I don't know. Yes. I'm curious if there's something, a, a theme that you see coming up. I think the biggest theme is the mask that women have worn throughout their lives because they're so afraid to show their true self. And so they hide pieces of themselves. And we actually did an exercise with masks. Um, I have a box of them and it's really interesting all the things like you know they put on a happy face everything's fine um, and they're afraid to really open up to other people for fear of criticism and judgment so that was really the a, that's the biggest piece that I see is women are ready to take off their masks they're just not sure how or how it's going to be accepted mm. yeah it's um it's brave work I mean when you yeah. start to show yourself you know yeah I mean, even in just starting this like yeah. You have moments where you feel like um, you're exposed and you're vulnerable and it gets scary and you want to retreat. People may not like, you know, people may say, oh, no, I yeah. like the other version better. Yes. I oh, yeah. Like this version. Of yeah. you. I, of you. you know? Yeah. <laughs> they don't. And I think that you can lose people. And it's funny because I see a lot of people divorcing because they don't like the changes that people are, are mm -hmm. making in their life, which is kind of sad. It is. But yeah. Yeah. What is, um, speaking of this, that those challenges that come out of it, this is what's scary about discovering who you are is realizing that the people around you may not, um, be familiar with that person. What, yes. um, how do you approach that? How do you prepare women for that? And, um, What's hard about, I mean, what's really, that's, it's already hard. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah. How yeah. Do and I think I see that because there's so many women that get rejected for when they step in, into their power and really start, re, you know, reclaiming who they are, people reject them. And I just have to remind them, like, then maybe those people aren't for you. Right. Because I, I don't know, like I've been with my husband now for 25 years and he's my biggest supporter. I, I mean, all of my crazy ideas, he's like, go for it. Like, I, I, so I don't know personally what that feels like, but I have lost friends who don't like the change in me. Um, and it's painful, but I also know like, but if I'm growing, expanding and really in my essence and my truth, then they're, then they're not the right people for me right now. If they're not like cheering me on too. Right. Like you would think people would really be a support and be excited for that. And so when they're not, um, they're probably triggered by you because they want to be changed. They want to change, but they're just too afraid to do it. Mm. Yeah. Or they can't, or they have limiting beliefs or they yes. have things that are yes. legitimately holding them back. Maybe lack of support is a good reason to not yes. um, that primal version of uh, females that doesn't want to leave the safe yeah. the tribe, you know? Like, yeah it's really scary to venture out on your own. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And well, it could just be that they secretly may, well, some people may want what you have and they're uncomfortable with that change. And that can be in anything that can be, let's see if someone loses weight or somebody yeah. stops smoking or somebody, yeah. whatever that makes a positive change. Other people may say, Oh, well, you know, you're not, you know, you're not going out tonight. It's like, well, no, I'm, you know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not doing that anymore. You know, and it's like, you know, so some, and if, and if people don't accept it, then that's, it's, it's okay. You know, they're going to, you know, to, to accept that some people not, are not going to, are going to reject you, but it is hard at first. It definitely you know, is. Ultimately, yeah. down the line, I, I see where it would be, you know, you'd say that, well, they're not right for me, but in the immediate. It's, it's, it's painful. Hard. It's painful for yeah. sure. And so my vision is to really create this community of women where other women can step in and find that support. So when you're going through all of these changes and you could be losing people, you still have this tribe of amazing women who are cheering you on and wanting the best for you. So that's, that's an important thing in any creative endeavor, but especially here, 
uh, surrounding yourself with the right people. Yeah. And yes. who, how do you, uh, who do you lean on? How do you surround, actively cultivate a group that's supporting all this? I mean, I know your husband, you mentioned. Yeah. I know Emma, I know your daughter is into it. She loves it. She is. <laughs> um, so it's funny. I, um, I started working with a mentor back in March because I was really like, I need to work with somebody to help me kind of like hone what, like all of my big visions for this. Um, so her name is um, Angel Quintana. She owns Holistic Fashionista Magazine and this whole movement of Holistic Fashionista. So she's been an incredible resource and um, just support through this. And then I have my sistership circle that I've been in since really April. Um, so Tanya has started this sistership circle. I think it's been around for 10 years. I think she started it in California, actually. Um, and she's in Costa Rica now. So just having these women that I like, I've got a friend in New Jersey, I've never met her face to face, but we've met on zoom. And she's become like such a beautiful friend of mine. And I'm like, I just wish I could meet you in person. But I've met her through these zoom, like support circles. And it's been really beautiful. So that's where I find a lot of my support. No, I'm going to jump. I mean, usually yeah, we, I wanted to, you seem like you have a great spirit. What is your, what do you do in your morning or your day to, to, to oh, get yeah. yourself in, in a good spot? I, I mean, know you're up. Meditation, <laughs> right? Exercise, really, yeah. like, yeah. you know. So I, uh, my alarm is set for 5.30 on weekday mornings. Um, sometimes I'm up before that. So sometimes I don't even have my alarm. So, but I make it a I didn't know alarms where... even went at her. My family but, thinks okay. I'm crazy. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> but I make it a point where I do not even look at my phone when I wake up in the morning. Because if I like even open my phone, I will just go down the rabbit hole and like get distracted by social media or the news or everything. So I wake up, I literally come in my office and I have a meditation pillow on the floor and I meditate. And then after that, I journal. Um, and then after that, I'll sometimes read a book for a little bit. So I give myself a good hour in the morning. And I really started that when my boys were little. Uh, my boys mm -hmm. are 17 months apart. So it was like survival mode. Right. And so I was like, I need time for me. And so I started that routine and it's just evolved and everybody knows like that is my time. Don't talk to me <laughs> in the morning, but that's how I get a lot of my downloads and ideas is in that space, especially when I'm journaling. I get a lot from that. Mm. That's great. Yeah. And yeah. exercise. I know you're. Yes. I exercise too. So after that morning routine that I take Emma to school, which she'll be driving in two weeks, which is crazy. Oh um, yeah. Um, so it'll get, it'll be a little different. So I drive her to school. Then when I come back, I hop on the Peloton or go out for a walk or something like that. So I really don't start like working till like nine o'clock. So I have all this beautiful morning to That's myself. Yeah. And, and I agree that there's no beauty in social media. I've made them as something. Yeah. Suddenly like an hour and a part of my soul goes by like really quick yeah. and angry and I'm like oh. yes and, like, and I think oh. like you said like trying to be a light like a, a positive energy on social media um yeah. and I I want to do that too like create that space for people but it's hard because you see things and then we can be triggered and then it's just a whole mess <laughs> especially Twitter I find is you know like is probably the for me at least is usually yes. worse but yes but any social media is probably yeah great, you know. What yeah. are you two yeah. favorites? I'm just curious. So my favorite right now is I'm on Instagram a lot, more than I am Facebook. Um, so I'm kind of getting back into Facebook a little bit because I've had a lot of people like, well, what are you doing and how can I know more? So I've been, you've seen me like posting more on my personal Facebook. Yeah. So those are the two. I definitely am on Twitter, but I don't post. I just read stuff, and which is probably not good. <laughs> <laughs> they say you have to pick like two like you can't be on yeah. all of them yeah you so. can't you can't yeah. like people are like get on tiktok and i'm like no no <laughs> <laughs> maybe but i don't think so right I don't now know. it's like and it takes time i mean it takes, it takes a lot of time yeah it takes time yeah. to learn them and then to navigate them and even just one takes a lot of time it really does definitely and to connect with people on there because that's what i'm looking to do is really connect and, and and it's hard to find the right people or have them find you so yeah it definitely takes that nurturing of of that it platform. is slow growth for sure in the connect yes. in yeah because 
I don't think it's immediately what people go to those sites for, but there are so, I mean, I have met the most wonderful people and done, just made so many changes through Facebook. And I stayed yeah. off of it for a long time. But the people I have met through Facebook have been in some ways more real, more supportive, yeah. uh, more challenging. I agree. Not than you, yeah. but. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you. I totally yeah. agree with you. So it's been great. Um, yeah. Who do you, uh, who, all these projects you yeah. have going on, you start your day at nine. How do you structure your day? How yeah. do you make time for everything? Do you have a so, heart? No, I am so like fly by the seat of my pants. Um, <laughs> I try, like, I'm like, okay, on this day, I do have some structure. Like Monday mornings, my newsletter goes out to my, to my list. Um, so I do that. And so I'm trying to be better. I'm not good at structure. Um, and I find when I have a lot of structure, I'm like, I can't do it. So I really just let things flow organically. That's probably not the best, but it works for me. Um, and I think because I'm so excited about what I'm doing, I'm able to like, I just want to get up and start working on it. Mm -hmm. So that makes me excited, like writing my new curriculum. I just, I love it so much for these women. And even that, like I have this outline and everything that I wanted to do for it. But then when I'm in group with the women, it changes based on, what we're talking about that week so then i'm like okay the next week we're going to touch on this because they really were struggling here so that's organic as well which i like it flows do you shut it off at a certain time of day for yourself i do i'm usually done like i have to pick emma up from school um it just depends on if she's in sports so it could be one o'clock or it could be three o'clock so i'm done after that and i really am no good because i'm up so early that my brain just i'm done i can't really get anything else done <laughs> what do you do with the rest of your day <laughs> um so normally i'll sit outside or emma and i will go you know grab coffee or we'll go shopping or something like that really spending time with her she's getting to that age she just said to me we spent a lot of time together these last couple of weeks mom is it because i'm gonna drive soon and you you're not gonna see me <laughs> as much <laughs> No. So really it's her. She's super and like, she's a weightlifter and she's in volleyball. So she keeps us very busy after school. That's fantastic. What yeah. a great example you're setting for her. I mean, yeah. so lucky to have found each other, yeah. Really, but yeah, I know. It's, yeah. You. it's so random and wonderful. <laughs> it is. Know? It is. She, she actually was just the photographer at my event on Saturday. And so my family thinks I'm very like voodoo, woo woo, witchy. They're like, you know, with essential oils and all my stuff. Oh. Um, so she hadn't seen a woman's circle before, but, and I asked her to be the photographer. Um, and then afterwards she just gave me the best compliment and I'm like, and out of everything, just to hear my 15 year old say, you know, she's like, wow, mom, she's like, you are so amazing at that and, and what you did for those women. And she's like, it, she goes, first, it was weird for me to see you like that. Cause I, you know, your mom, she's like, but you were, she used the word extraordinary. Wow. So, yeah. So that, that even for her to see that like impacted her and to see all these women really open up and get vulnerable and share. I just thought how powerful for her. Well, if something oh, comes up in those, I mean, do you have a way to download? I mean, something comes up heavy or something comes yes. up. Do you have a personal way? Because um, mm -hmm. I'm a therapist and I, okay. I haven't asked him, but I should ask him, you know, what does he do? To, so, so I'm asking you, like, is there a way that you um, are able to sort of um, download or kind of like um, get back into your own headspace? Like decompress <laughs> afterwards? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I go outside and I'll just like barefoot in the grass and I'll walk around for a while and just kind of let myself come down. I have found like when, after I lead women's circles or women's groups, for some reason the next morning I cry. And at first I was like, what is wrong with me? But then I was like, no, I'm just releasing and this is how I'm releasing. So I let myself do that because you're holding such space for these women to get vulnerable and to really um, let go that it's, right. it's heavy. It's very heavy. Um, and, and then I become real introverted. I like, don't talk to me for a couple of days. I get real quiet as I'm just kind of digesting everything. Um, so yeah, lots of self-care, exercise. I heard, this alone referred, time. I heard this referred to recently as the vulnerability hangover. 
Yeah. And it's, yeah, I never <laughs> heard that word before. And it made such sense that after like not oversharing, cause we're not over like that. And that yeah. would be, that would be what a, a kind of a stigma, right? Is that, Oh, right. you're an oversharer, right? You have to tell everybody everything. Like that's exactly what you were, you're, you would be trying to get women away from, but that you do need to allow yourself time. Yeah. Whether you're facilitating or experiencing this, to kind of withdraw into yourself and absorb a little bit, process. Yeah. 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 I never thought like, of it. Mm -hmm. I journal a lot afterwards just to kind of get everything out because it's a lot. Yeah. And to plan on that time, um, the person I, I heard talking about it was talking about like after a, a big sit down with her board of um, advisors that advise her business, how many of her days it is, she needs that many more days to to kind of come back into yeah yeah and i so got that <laughs> and it's no different than like if you're if you're doing something physical whether it's a marathon whether it's a um you know spartan race which i'm going to do or play tennis you need to, you know you need to like recharge your batteries you know you yeah. can't you know just you know keep going and going and you need a yeah. little um to recharge and recharge your mind and your spirit when you're doing that yeah. work Recovery, yeah, time. recovery time recovery time yeah it's so important and i think you can get burned out if you don't take it and so for me to really honor that space for myself helps me to just you know continue that is key that is yeah key. for sure <laughs> what is the um so what you're doing is that it's it's on the edge like this is uh edgy work right is that yeah safe to say okay. yeah so it's what is um when you're talking to people about this mm -hmm. what you're doing um, when you're talking to women about it, what is the hardest, what's the biggest obstacle in explaining it and getting people to kind of come around to these ideas? Biggest obstacle, and it was my biggest obstacle, was um, I hate women. I don't trust other women. How can I show up with other women and, and share myself when mm -hmm. they're not safe for me? And I had that. I mean, in high school, I hung out with mostly guys because I thought which girls were unsafe. Um, and so I just share my story and my experience because I really needed community, especially after COVID. We were all so isolated um, that I was just looking. I'm like, I need to connect with people. And I saw the sistership circle and I was like, I'm going to join. I was terrified. I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, and it was the best thing I could have ever done because all the women who show up are feeling the same things. And I think that's what's awesome about that work is we really mirror for each other. Um, and so, you know, for me to come in and be like, I'm scared to be here. And then everybody else is like, oh my God, I'm scared to be here too. <laughs> and so it opens up, you know, and then it just starts building on that trust and that foundation. And there are women that they just won't show up because they're not able to, they, they just can't get past that place. And I just say, you know, you're not ready yet. And maybe one day you will be ready and we'll be here, but it's okay to not be ready. I just think you can't force anybody into that. They have to be open and willing to really step into that because it's vulnerable. Mm, right. That's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like, is there, what do you see? There's probably many um, in society, whether it's advertisement, whether it's magazine covers, whatever, I don't know. Um, inputs that we're get that women are getting from the outside world that helps mm -hmm. reinforce keeping that mask on. I mean, do you see, yeah. well, tell, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I think the biggest one is, um, well, one of the biggest ones is like, don't show your emotions, have it all together. Everything's fine. Right. And so we don't reach out for help when we're struggling. Um, and I was guilty of it too. I had two little boys and I always called it like survival mode, but I, I would not ask for help because I was going to be a great mom and I was going to be able to do it. And, and I think we, like society does put that on us. Like you need to, you need to have all your crap together and, you know, keep it together. And I think that's one of the hardest ones is not being able to ask for help. I'm still bad at it. I'm better, but it's, it's still struggle for sure. But you've gone, um, now with the writing of the books, I know you were, yeah. you got into a program yeah. right, that launched yeah. that and I've discovered that too, that, and that's why we're here. That's why we're trying to do what we're doing here is that just men and women now um, yes. in the writing circles, it's the same thing. P writers are afraid to talk to each other about 
It's hard. I mean, Megan yeah. last week said so just hard. nobody nobody tells you. No. It feels like everybody's putting out a book and then nobody tells you how she said how stinking hard it really it's is. So hard. Yeah. And you really critique and judge yourself the whole way through, right? And and there are days where I just shut my computer. I'm like, I got I got nothing. <laughs> nothing flowing. And it's frustrating. It is. And you feel alone because you're not reaching out for help. Um, and so that part, so I was in some writing like Facebook groups, but even in there, I didn't open up so much about my struggles either. And I think it's a shame because I probably would have gotten a lot more help in that area. What was, now you've written seven. These yeah. are um, adult romance novels. Romance. Yes. <laughs> Steamy romance. <laughs> Under your own name because you did not cave to pressure from your children to no. use a pen yeah. name. That's they great. Will you later, I know they will. Yes. Um, what was the hard, of the seven, what was the hardest, what was the hardest part of the seven? What was the hardest uh, part? I, I will tell you writing a series like I wrote a trilogy and that was so hard for me um, and I am definitely like I have an outline in my head um, but I don't write a lot of stuff down it, it just it, like I said it comes organically and flows so that's my hardest part is I need I need to be better organized because I'm just writing like as things are coming to me um, and so writing a trilogy was really hard because I was like okay, I said I'm doing this trilogy and okay, where am I ending this book? And then what's going to be in book two? And then what's going to be in book three? And that was, that was super difficult. I don't know if I could, if I would do that again for me, it was really, it was hard. And you started these in your, this is only a few years ago now, right? Three, four yes. years ago? I think it was after I left, uh, it was probably 16 or 17, okay, so I think. That's not too long. Um, no, and I just started writing. I, I will tell you, I had a friend who was diagnosed with breast cancer years ago. And I, she said these words, and this is in relation to her breast cancer, but she was like, well, why not me? She's like, I'm not going to sit around and say, why me? And I always told her, I'm like, your words resonated with me so deeply that I used them for everything. Like, why not me? If I want to write a book, why not me? Like, why do I have to put, you know, parameters on anything so I really always took her words and put them towards everything that is so beautiful what's her name yeah I'm um, Kathy Jones Kathy mm. Jones why not yeah why yeah. Not? yeah 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 why that so I, for you why that genre I mean yeah I mean, oh so, 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 you had never uh, written a book before this I know you had written some blogs right and you wrote for your work yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, but I wrote like home studies and yeah. you know, <laughs> more. Um, so that genre I've read my whole life, Daniel Steele, Nora, you know, Roberts, kind of all of that. My mom is a huge romance reader. She loves historical romance and my grandmother. So it was like, I always grew up with them around and then, it, I, and I'm an avid reader. I love reading. And so I read, I, I can't remember how many times I checked out Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in third grade at Tulsa Trail. <laughs> like I checked it out so many times. Like I just love, and so it just evolved into that. And I think middle school was, was it Sweet Valley High or something like the twin girl? I don't know. I just love fiction stories. So, I have, and I love romance. I'm a hopeless romantic. <laughs> I had an older sister. So I have to say one of the first romance novels I read was the Thornbirds, which is not, <laughs> not, for young adults at all. No. So I skipped <laughs> over the Sweet Valley High and I went right yeah, to the you went right to the deep stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I went into the deep dive, yeah. So yeah. I kind of skipped like, hello, God, it's me, Margaret. Like, yeah, we yeah. went past that right to the heavy. You really did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Grew up yeah. real quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Made That's a good funny. movie. Or yeah. a series. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so you start this book, you, wrote, you write seven. You're still writing. This yeah. is still a thing. What yeah. are some of your, how do you, what are, what tools do you use to do all this writing on? Um, I, on my computer, <laughs> my Mac. That's it, Mac. I have an editor. She's in England. I went through quite a few editors to try to find the right one. That's a whole process too, to really fit with somebody and, and mesh with somebody. So I did found it find a great one for my last couple of books. So she's been wonderful. Um, found my cover designer on 99 Designs. Yeah, I just went through, 
They are, yeah. And she's been incredible. She's done all of them now. Like, like my first book, she redid them for me. Um, cause when I was working with his name is Rami Vance, he was a writing coach and he's like sci-fi uh, author. He's also in England. Um, so he was a great coach for me, but he would be like, okay, let's try changing your cover. Let's try, you know, just all these different things or rewriting your blurb. And I will tell you that blurb is like the hardest thing to freaking write. It's talking like, about the back, the back cover. Yes. <laughs> I've heard like, that. Yeah, I don't do know yet. Know? I'll find out, but I don't yes. know. Good luck. Let me know. Cause it's so hard to like summarize it. And then I'm like, wow, this is terrible. I'm a terrible writer. I can't even summarize what I just did. I think it's, it's hard. hard. One of the, it one is. of the it hardest is. things we have to do as screenwriters is yeah. boil, the, boil the whole How thing you? down into two or three lines. How do you do it? I know. It's really, it's, an, it's a lot of work. People, it's more work than just spilling it all out sometimes. The fewer words, exactly. the harder it gets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you have to do it so you're grabbing people's attention and like making it so they want to read it. And it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. much is like actually what you write, but you have to try to figure out, you know, um, how to boil that down into two, maybe three sentences. That's just short. Yes. So people are like, oh, this sounds interesting. But without yeah. giving you know too much away too much away thinking, but overwriting yeah. it and then it's very very hard you know? it's very difficult it really is yeah yeah but that's you know that's right part of it you know, yeah i know you have to learn these things do you have yeah. any tips on uh you said you went through quite a few editors i'm curious about this because i'm getting to that point with my nonfiction book um do you have any t how did you filter your editors what um so it was asking for samples so sending like the first chapter and and really kind of laying them all out like okay and then even some i thought were okay and then when the book came back, I was like, oh no, even though they did a great job on that first chapter. Um, so I think it's being on top of them and really, you know, stating everything that you're looking for out of them because some of them will edit, but they won't do like grammar. It'll just be, or spelling, it'll just be kind of the content, you know, all of your, uh, the, yeah. So it's like making sure that it's all in there because i'm like i need it all like <laughs> like grammatically and all of that i need everything um and making sure you're a good fit with them that they're listening to you yeah right. yeah. Like yeah if you're if you're i mean do you find there are people that specialize in stuff because i know that for me like if i was to help with i'm not a huge romantic i like romantic comics but i'm not a huge romantic comedy yeah. well, i don't like horror so yeah. to me it would be almost impossible to edit something that's hard because it's just not yeah me. Thing. And did you find the same thing with editors? Yes, because my first editor, and again, I'm in steamy romance, and she um, was very Christian. And I was like, that's probably not the best not fit. And she did it, but I think she had a very difficult time doing it. I felt horrible. Yeah. And she was wonderful and she did it. But I was like, okay, I need to, you know, be, be a little more aware of that. All right. Got it. What is the name of the series? The, the whole. The whole, oh, which the book series? The three, the, oh, the books, uh, oh, the trilogy yeah, is yeah, yeah. Um, the seduction series. Seduction uh, so, series. That's yeah, everything you need to know. <laughs> you so should see the about? covers. Trust me, people. You should see the covers. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> there's a lot of skin. There's yeah. a lot of skin. skin. My my last book is um, it's a bit more sweet. It's not as steamy. That's okay. They're they're beautiful yeah. black and whites of just like yeah. bodies, yeah, and yeah. six pack abs and yeah. It, <laughs> Those have changed now too, though too. Okay, good. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen the cover in a bit. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. Have to, I'll see if I can find. <laughs> no guy with a big gut. <laughs> like you know. That's what my husband's always like. Don't you want me to be on the cover? I'm like, no, no. Right. no. <laughs> the dad bod romance. The dad bod romance. I bet you that could be a good genre. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, I want to ask you about uh, what you're listening to because I know you're creating a lot of content. You're creating yes. uh, your website, your blog, your circle, your podcast. Yeah, have a little that's new. new. Yeah, I was really that. challenged to do that. So I did like a quick little pop up podcast. And yeah. um, I really like it. I just have to figure it out too. So I, I would know. like to continue and do interviews. Same thing. 
Yeah, we yeah. should stay in touch because I don't yeah. have to do it either. That's why I'm doing the Zoom, <laughs> I'm doing the Zoom interview. I coined the term <laughs> vodcast. I feel like, yeah. I, I don't know, I just came up with, I'm sure other people are using it, but I'm like, okay, I don't know how to do the art. Perfect. Audio. Yeah, do the I don't either, but this is perfect. I think a lot of people do it this way. Yeah, 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 I do. I think Rich Rich Roll, I know, does it. Like yeah. It for others. And um, I want to quickly go back oh, yeah. real quick. Go ahead. We talked sure. about some of the negatives of, um, and there's many of social media, but one of the things mm. I found on uh, Twitter, actually, of all places, is that there is a um, good conversation that ha happens, I find, among very successful screenwriters. And what I have found is that even among the most successful, you know, with TV series and movies, they struggle. They yeah. get rejected. They don't hear back from a person. And so it's it's helpful, or they were fired off a project or whatever, that no one is impervious to right. like what I deal with and other people deal with. It's not like they're in this, because Grace is right. Sometimes you just don't hear from someone without, so before social media, all of a sudden they have a movie out and you're like, oh my God, the guy just, or gal right. just writes it and it goes right into the theaters, right from the page to the theater. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, actually, we were directed, and then we the was a yeah. He got fired, and they were they was having an affair, and it, it, it's a yeah. you know it was a disaster. So yeah. I mean, it's it's it is helpful to hear if people are willing to be vulnerable. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, one of my Brian compliments, one of the uh, person I listen to the most, and he was basically unhirable. He, he writes billions and created billions. Was, oh, okay, yeah, I love that show. But I mean, he was he, his agent said at the time, 2015 we can't like you're basically yeah. unhirable wow and yeah he said, okay i'm asking not what he said yeah he said more than that, but <laughs> yeah and they wrote they wrote a pilot for billions and yeah. a new agent but my point is is like they deal with this you know it's not like somehow they get a, it's not an overnight success no it's, and it's, it's, a it's a journey. Yes. Someone I think literally told them um that no one's gonna watch a show about billionaires. Yeah. And who cares about billionaires? Like people are yeah. struggling, people are this, yeah. people are that. Like, who and cares? people love it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Two yeah. jets. And talk know? about yeah. powerful women. That show is replete. Right. Um, powerful women. Many different versions of the powerful woman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, one of the books that I read, sorry to interrupt, was um, Stephen King. I don't read yeah. his genre. I don't like horror either, but his book on writing right. and all his struggles, I was like, thank you. Like I needed to keep that. Yeah, it was great. And he has a chest always said of, of, of books that will never be read. They were that will never I know. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I have books like yeah. that too that are un Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So, so I, think I at, love that. I think at a point those struggles become uh badges of honor. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's part of the gig. Yeah, everyone's wearing them and loves to tell you about their late yeah. the, the rejections, but for so long we hide them. And I wonder, it's something I'll have to think about, is I wonder where that switch flips, like where, yeah. where the rejections go from being painful to proud. Like, right, yeah. I, mean, I guess, unfortunately, it's finally when someone acknowledges that it's worthwhile. Well, you can right? look back yeah. and laugh at it when you have a number one show on <laughs> yeah. show. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Like oh, I never yeah. doubted it for a minute. Yeah. Of course yeah. It's you know, it's a little yeah. easier to goof around it about it then. Well and even like with my writing coach, he like, you know, you don't want a bad review, but you're gonna get them because not everybody's gonna like your stuff. And he really taught me like but the bad reviews are good too because it gets other people to read them. And I was like, how does that even, but he's right because people will read the bad review and be like, oh, well now I got to see what this is all about. And they read it. So right. he totally changed my mindset on that because you know, you get a bad review and I'm able to now not take it to heart. So I'm like, that's one person's opinion. But in the beginning, it's like, gutting <laughs> you're like oh my gosh yeah terrible well Seth Godin um, who's like a uber author a super yeah I have his, read his previews he said yeah because people read, can be far. yeah yeah people and can yet be Brian, Brian Koppelman responds to all anyone who Sometimes, criticizes yeah. his show he'll say thanks for watching thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah. but like, I love that <laughs> Your intelligence baffles me no he, yeah. no, he yeah. can be very snarky sometimes can, yeah thank you for your and you're brilliant, mess, yeah. mess, mess, whatever. Like we appreciate yeah. you watching the show. Well, I always say people are keyboard warriors, right? So they'll say things oh, yeah. behind the keyboard that they will never say to your face. So never, she yeah. Totally shut down. If it was a yeah. law that you had to say it to someone's oh face, gosh. there'd be ten tweets a day. 
<laughs> and it'd be exactly. like, oh, I, got new, I got a new car, I got a new bike, and that would be about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Taking my dog for a walk. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag right. good dog. Like, yeah, that yeah. would be it. Yeah. So where can people find you? Because you have a lot, you have different things going on. Where can I do? So you can find me on Instagram, um, Jennifer underscore underscore Kittredge or on my website, which is wildheartedrevolution.com. And then I'm also on Facebook, Jennifer Romano Kittredge. And that's it because I'm really not on anything else. And on Amazon, right? And on Amazon. My books are all on Amazon. And I will tell you, when I, my first book came out, everybody thought it was going to be like a personal development book and they couldn't believe that I wrote romance. I love it. I love the yeah. pictures. Like come my, out of left field and just like, yeah. what a way to make a splash. Yeah. I will write a personal development book, kind of. It will come. Of course. Just, yeah. It'll come based on everything I'm doing. Oh, Great. well, throwing that out so, to the universe. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Jennifer. I know thank we were short, sure, but it's like, there's so much to talk about. I and, know. And, and share. So we'll definitely follow up with you. Um, okay. Things get going and um, hear more about your projects. But um, for now, um, I'll make sure I put all those references in the show notes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And I will, once I get mine going, we'll have you guys on too. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> you are. Bye, I love it. Girl. Thank you so Thank you. much. All See right. you. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right. That was Jen Romano Kittredge out of the Tampa, Florida area, talking about all her different projects. Do you have anything? Any immediate reflections? Well, just that she has, you know, some people have a routine where it's like nine o'clock, mm. 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and that's great. That works for them. She seems to have a more organic approach to her work day, and there's no right or wrong. She wrote seven books and doing a ton of other stuff, and that's fantastic. So it just shows that everyone has a different process. Um, it seems like the, con the constant is getting work done, but Boy, how, that... you get, how you get there is totally individual and there's no right or wrong as long as you do the work. There's a nugget. That's oh, true. That's yeah. so smart. <laughs> I can't believe myself sometimes. All right. Well, um, until next week, um, we will have another guest next week. I'm hoping, I, I haven't scheduled her yet. I'm hoping to have an Enneagram coach on next mm -hmm. week. Um, but I have, again, a list of ladies that want to uh, come on and talk with us. So, Let's get some gentlemen, man gentlemen. Man up. Start your engines, okay? Oh we need, we need, uh, we want the men's perspective here. So, if Obama's you... not working, he might have yeah. time. All right, we could have him on. I yeah, he's doing all that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, until next week, we will see you back here. Until next week, set your alarms for whatever time you feel most creative and productive. Eight thirty. Eight thirty is good. Eight. I like eight. Okay. Eight Before eight makes me feel like I'm not a total snob. <laughs> All right. And then go rise and write. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We Have will, a great day. We will see you week. next week. Have a great life. <laughs>